to my series about old Chopin's music. Today we talk about this crazy thing. Prelude in B flat minor, opus 28, number 16, a nightmare for pianists. Um, one of the most effective, if not the most effective prelude of all, by, I wouldn't say that it's the most difficult. Of course, all pianists can have their own ranking, and I also have my own ranking, and I can tell you because I'm sure it's interesting for you. So in my ranking, uh, the unquestionable number one is G sharp minor, this one. Number two, maybe you will be surprised, but I will talk about it, is E flat major, this, you know, E flat major, we will talk about it later. I think it's almost equally difficult like G sharp minor. Then maybe F sharp minor, this one. And number four, I would say this one. Of course, it's hard, extremely difficult. But in fact, I have uh, some advice to make it much easier. This is how I worked, and it's a new piece for me. As 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 you can maybe say, it's it's not that comfortable yet. Uh, it's still I'm in the process. It's a piece that I learned especially for these videos. Uh, so, um, you know, I just deleted the perfectionist inside myself because otherwise I would have never recorded this analysis. Uh, but anyway, um, I know that soon I will reach the level that I want um, because I have tools for that and I want to give these tools also to all of you even if you are not pianists just for you to uh, to know what we how we have to work um, and for a pianist maybe it will be useful but this we will do after the uh, regular analysis so um, be patient uh, in, in the second half of this video, uh, I will be talking about pianistic problems. And this is the reason why the camera is closer, you are closer, you can almost touch me and you can see my hands. Uh, okay, so I think the, the character of the piece is obvious. We don't have to talk about it too much. We don't have to read books, even though there is a, a description in the, of course, but this, will not bring any new things to all of us. It's one of the pieces of these pieces that is very obvious. I mean, it's impossible to argue or to to feel something else. It's simply panic, escape. Well, just to talk a little bit about uh, the beginning, because the beginning, uh, we have six notes of uh, introduction. And then we have a very fast run the right hand is running all over, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Black, white, black, white keys all the time in a very fast tempo. The faster, the better. <laughs> so, um, because Chopin writes presto con fuoco, which means fast and with a fire. What is this? And, you know, when I learned this prelude and when I played it, um, Somehow in my mind, uh, I mean, it reminded me um, one of very frightening experiences in my life, actually extremely frightening. And I want to tell you about it because I think it's interesting. It was in 2010, so it was quite a long time ago, 11 years ago. I had a concert in Geneva, in Switzerland. A beautiful city and I remember and I will never forget the night before the concert I was sleeping like a baby and suddenly in the middle of the night fire alarm started to I mean woke me up and I was in panic of course so I, I didn't think too much I just jump out of bed and run with my pyjama through the staircase, of course, down to the lobby. My heart was beating like this, you know, and and I wanted to just escape from the hotel. And then in the lobby, 
the receptionist just uh, told me that it's nothing is wrong. Somebody was taking a hot bath. I mean, at three o'clock at night or something like that. Never mind. And you know, the steam from the bath just opened the whole fire alarm for the whole hotel. But what I felt, I only I know. And I still remember that even though it was 11 years ago. And I can't help having this kind of feeling in this prelude. Musically speaking, we don't have to talk about images, but musically speaking, at the beginning of the prelude, something terrible happens. Some tragedy happens. Before, we can imagine that before we were sleeping or dreaming, it was so peaceful and suddenly something explodes. We have an explosion. We have something that we don't expect at all. So what do we do? Well, we run, we escape. Of course, everybody escapes in this situation. And we escape, escape all the time. And this is, in my opinion, the, the, the image of the, this prelude. Of course, we can find many other images, but for me, this one is personally the closest because I experienced something like that in my life. And now let's do something extremely difficult, but possible. The analysis, the structure analysis. I will try my best to make this piece much easier to follow when you listen to it. Of course, it seems crazy, it seems impossible, because the tempo is so fast. Uh, but I think that it can be a quite a nice exercise for our brain. Because um, when we learn how it is constructed in a slower tempo first, and then we can try to practice our brain and our ears while listening to fast performances and trying to follow the structure. Because the structure here is actually uh, makes sense. I mean, it is deeply thought of by Chopin, of course. Even though it sounds like crazy. Okay, so. The, the whole piece has, um, th doesn't have a structure simply ABA. This is a little bit more complicated. It's more like a, B, A, B prime, and then B double, B, B two. So we have like A, B, A, B, B, but these two Bs are a little different. And of course, a short coda. Okay, so let's now focus deeper. And now um, I want to explain myself. I will be using a very simple comparisons using as simple words as possible, because I think only this way it will make sense. So we are not going to use any musical terms or anything like that. On the contrary, we will use uh, sometimes our imagination just to know where we are and what is going on. So, okay, part A, I, I can describe part A as a kind of climbing up and then falling down and it will happen three times in part a and three times in a different way now i present for you these three times and this is what you should focus on when you listen first time is very regular which simply have a scale going up and a scale going down <laughs> I think it's simple. Again. Okay. Then we have the same thing, but in a miniature, mini, up scale up and down. Up and down. Okay. So together it sounds like this. Up. Down. Up and down. Okay. Then we have something a little bit more complicated. Again, we climb up. I mean, the right hand is climbing up 
and then falling down but this time we will not have a scale but we will have like circles i call it and now don't laugh a crazy climbing up and a crazy climbing down so instead of just simply going from point a to point b to climb we're climbing like this a little here then here then here then here then maybe here then here then here and finally we reach the point this point and then we go down also like this to reach the point where we started how does it sound let's listen <laughs> Again, slower. Now let's analyze this crazy climbing up and then crazy climbing down. If you have very good ear, you can maybe try to hear little groups that are hidden in this um, passage going up and passage going down. I Now I play for you these groups. I mean, I, I will emphasize them. Four notes, right? And how their notes are constructed? With seconds, of course. Two seconds. So listen. Second, uh, one second up and then down, right? Then. The groups of four notes. So if we imagine that every group of the four notes is played by a different instrument in the orchestra or by a different voice, uh, well, I can try to do it to play this four in different octaves. Let's see if it's possible. Mm. octaves here but when I reach top then I go down okay so that we have these different uh, different voices let's let's play again and now it starts try to listen to these groups. Sorry. This also makes it a little easier to learn, um, especially to memorize. So this is this crazy going up and then crazy going down. What do we hear? We actually hear some kind of melody like this. seconds also right so and after this part a is finished so this is the end of part a and we proceed to part b so now i play for you the whole part a in its entirety <laughs> and down and now crazy up and crazy down okay this is now part b part b um, also has some kind of very funny um, image in my imagination at least part b we, we can characterize part b as somebody who is trying to climb up but cannot do it because reach the sailing maybe or the the wall and goes back reach the wall and goes back so we try but we have to go back again we try again go back again we try and again many times it will happen one two three four five six seven times 
we will try to do it. So, um, and, and it will we, we will grow. So we will go a little higher, but every time the, the motif will be like up and down, up and down, you know? And now it will be a little funny for you and for me as well, but it really helps me, especially when I play. When I, every time when I play this part B, I can't help thinking about the, the tennis. Tennis players, you know, when we have the ball, one and then here, and here, and here, and here, all the time. This is like the music, you know, we could make a very nice cartoon movie uh, when somebody's playing tennis, and then we have this melody. Now I play it for you slower, uh, so that you can uh, notice this moment when we hit the wall, and when we, we are back. Okay, listen. <laughs> back in the beginning of the piece, part A again. Could you hear that? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And we are back in part A. And part A is the same like it was. This crazy going up and crazy going down is a little different, especially crazy going down is a little different because Chopin wants to uh, finish in a different note. So I will compare. Let's compare. Um, what is also different in the second part A is that the left hand is making more noise. It's making a lot of noise because we have octaves. But later I will talk about the left hand. But now let's just listen to the construction. So part A uh, for the second time. And now here we have a little different. And we end part A on a different note. But now let's compare. Let's compare this going down, crazy going down. For the, in the first time it was... The second time is like this. Again, the first time, do I know it? Probably I should know it by heart. <laughs> okay, the first time. And then the second time. I know it's not easy to see the difference, so I forgive you if you cannot hear the difference, but there is a little difference, but it's not that important. Now we have part B, and part B this time is a little different, I mean still we have the tennis, and or we hit the wall every time, but the melody, if we can call it a melody, is a little different, and it instead of going up it will go down. Let's listen to this. This was very important moment. Suddenly, maybe you could see that two hands are playing together the same. For the first time in the piece. Why this is so important? Because after that, we will hear part B again, and for the very first time in the piece, actually, we can really hear that it's Chopin who wrote the piece. Why? Because we have a typical Chopin phrasing. Maybe you remember if you watched my other videos when I was telling you many times that the very typical Chopin-like phrasing is short, short, long. So we have the typical example, short, short, and long. And 
we have it in, in many, 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 many different uh, um, short, short and long and many pieces, most majority of the pieces, okay, almost everywhere. Okay, and here you can hear the same. Listen, short, short and long. Short, short, and lock. And what is also important in the short, short, long is that these two shorts are the same, right? So they, they are the same. Two times and then long. So this is the, the second B, I mean the third actually. And after that we have uh, the last going up. And this is constructed in a fantastic way. We immediately know that this must be prelude because we have only seconds here. I call it a party, a big party of seconds. Because first of all, left hand joins the right hand, so they play together. And we have a lot of seconds. So we can imagine a huge party when only seconds are meet. Why? <laughs> Second, second, second. Only seconds. How does it sound? And everything ends with two chords, like you know, two guns or some kind of cannon or something like that. And this is the end of the prelude. Very, very fast. With the, with without even realizing what is really going on we are we already close the the book so that's really fantastic i mean it's really fantastic this prelude sounds like an etude but there is one difference at least for me when i play most of the etudes i don't really have a pleasure of playing them there are a few exceptions um, but here I really do have a pleasure of playing. And I have to tell you, now we proceed to the pianistical problems to, and to sh I will show you what is difficult and how the pianists have to work on it. But, well, of course, without going into deep details, because for that I would need another video. But uh, before I start, I will just want to tell you that in fact, even if you maybe it's hard for you to believe, but you can trust the pianist who learned it right hand is not that difficult it is written by the pianist and he wrote it for himself you know i read in the book i think it was alan walker book uh, about chopin that in some one meeting in the salon uh, when chopin played a few preludes and also this one he was asked he was begged to play this prelude a few times in a row to repeat it that's how much they loved it and he did of course so it means that he also have had fun playing this prelude and why because he wrote it in a way that everything is natural for the hand for fingers every time when long fingers need black keys Chopin gives us black keys when short fingers need white keys he gives us white keys so one of the secret to play learn this prelude is good fingering so to to choose and decide good fingers that fingers that are natural to play and now another thing that might surprise you in this prelude not the right hand is actually very difficult but the left hand left hand is almost unplayable it's extremely hard to play in tempo now I play for you only the left hand and you can see, so you will see what is going on in the left hand. Fun 
fun starts. Focus. Crazy. It's really crazy. Very fast jumps. Very fast and then here in the second part when part a starts again we have octaves we have jumps and we have to very fast reach this note so as you can see the difficulty i mean it's uncomparable the right hand now right hand we just only need fast fingers to play right hand but uh, to be sincere now i want to share with you my own theory um, my students know it already because I always tell it but I want to tell to all of you um, I'm always saying that actually everybody has fast fingers all of you even if you don't play the piano if you just I ask you to move your fingers fast you can do it you can if I go on the street and I ask random 20 people people who I meet can you please move these fingers for me like this everybody can I mean well of course everybody a little different but they can right um, not like a pianist it doesn't I, I don't mean playing like a pianist but just doing like this and you know this we don't have to practice so what we really have to practice is fast thinking so the order from the brain to the finger that the finger shall move and we have to practice our brain so that in a milliseconds very very fast the brain says now you now you now you now you now you now you in the correct order and in a fast tempo and this is what actually pianists learn uh, and it takes many years of course so this is the difference between amateur pianists and professional pianists with many years of experience that the amateur pianist maybe can play this prelude in such a tempo and well, i'm not talking about this you know amateurs who are attending amateur competitions because they play almost like professionals actually or or they play like professionals but i'm just talking about people who play for fun for like a hobby um so right hand well we need to practice this fast thinking in different exercises i mean this is the the fastest way to to learn uh, to practice and master fast fingers and now i promised you to tell you what for me what made this prelude much easier when I realized that the real difficulty is the left hand and that the left hand is really jumping very much in a very fast tempo. Of course, first secret, which is not a secret, but I, I, I want to tell it, uh, is to learn every hand alone. So first, of course, memorize because uh, it's extremely hard to play from the score. So the first thing to memorize and learn then practice to get into tempo and when we reach the final tempo with every hand only then I, I recommend to start to play it together not before because we there is it's just a waste of time and now the most important thing we must learn the right hand without looking at the keyboard we must be able to play the whole right hand without looking at the keyboard this is very helpful and now i show you what i mean Hey. 
Actually, I can't really. This yes, I can't, but I don't need to do it because now I can look at the at the keyboard uh, because the left hand is playing the same. Okay, when I can play like this in tempo, it takes time, of course, but we have to practice small parts. When I can, then what I can do? I can forget about the right hand, and when I play this prelude, I can only look at the left hand and control the left hand with my eyes. So I try not to look at the right hand almost at all, and then it's much easier for me to play. And I think uh, if, 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 if there are some video recordings of pianists on YouTube or any, anywhere you can find, you probably will see that most of the time they look at their, I, I think so, they look at their uh, left hand. Um, because definitely it's much more difficult to learn to play left hand without looking. Maybe it's possible, yes, but uh, much more difficult, in my opinion. Um, and now the last thing, the pedal. And this is another shocking thing in this uh, prelude. Original Chopin pedal is really shocking. Now I play it for you. I play some part with original Chopin's pedal, written by his hand. is a, like a panic like an like a horror like a we are frightened maybe this is how Chopin wanted well you know pianists cannot really play like this especially for example in competition can you imagine of course I can't imagine you know of course the young pianist cannot go on stage of for example Chopin competition with the a, a table and the statement, I am playing original Chopin pedal. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, you know, w w we can think that um, the pianist who wins Chopin competition, for example, or who, you know, who, who gets a prize, is the closest, should be the closest of the idea that Chopin had how to play his own music. But unfortunately, it's not like that, because, of course, if there is some crazy pianist who wants to do it, probably he will be out of the competition, because maybe not all the jury members, but most of the jury members will simply write that it's impossible to hear what he plays. When we, when we have this long pedal, we don't hear every note, right? We don't. But maybe for Chopin it was not important to hear every note. Maybe he wanted to create music, not an, an etude, a prelude. So the message of Chopin is that we are afraid and we don't know what is going on. We, f we simply are, uh, we hear the explosion of the sound. Well, I, don't all, I also don't dare to play exactly 100% of Chopin's pedal, but from another reason. My reason is not the competition, but my reason is that I think that Chopin had different piano, 
and we all know it, that his pianos were shorter, the strings were shorter, so the sound was also shorter. So when he had a long pedal, it was not that much of the sound like in modern pianos we have. So I tried to find some gold, golden middle, as we say in Polish, I don't know how it's in English, but something that works uh, both that would work both for Chopin and for nowadays pianos and for our ears that we can still hear uh, that like I mean that everything is in order you know it's not a mess like just a huge mess but okay let's do like this now because I think the video is almost over but now I want to play for you much slower all the prelude um, so that we all can follow the structure and just to remind you the structure part A which consists of three parts scale going up scale going down then very short up and down and then crazy up and then crazy down then part B which is a tennis or with goes up, hit the wall, goes down, goes up, hit the sailing, goes down all the time. Then part A again, with left hand uh, more noise, creating more noise. Then the part B again, but this time going down. And then the third time part B, when we can hear Chopin's phrasing, short, short, long. And at the end we have the seconds, the party of the seconds, we go up and we end the prelude. Simple. Okay. Part A. Up and down. Crazy up. Crazy down. Part B. open spraising. Short, short, long. in its entirety with the original Chopin pedal. Uh, I think 
but easier to play because even if something uh, will not work in the right hand nobody will almost nobody will hear because we have a lot of pedals so we have a lot of sound i mean the the feeling of the pianist is safer but um i can't really agree with chopin i mean i'm sure that if chopin would live now with these pianos he would change a little the pedaling um, almost 100 percent sure but who knows <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for listening and see you again. Bye-bye.